Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Technology Philosophy. Today I'd like to give a summary of the Argentine philosopher Enrique Dussel's book, 20 Theses on Politics, published in 2006 in Spanish and 2008 in English. Dussel's project is to provide a liberation politics to include those who are currently excluded from political visibility and enfranchisement. His main device for doing this is extending the proclamation from the bourgeois revolution, i.e. the French Revolution, of equality, fraternity, liberty, into the deeper terms of alterity, solidarity, liberation. The book's style is somewhat in the form of aphorisms reminiscent of Nietzsche or Spinoza with enumerated points like 12.1.1. There are 20 theses in two parts directed at the new guard of incoming political practitioners with drawing liberally on material from Marx, Levinas, Machiavelli, and others in the text. Dussel's overarching vision is the absolute dignity of life in general. He is inspired by an observation from Marx of life as the prolongation and condition of our living bodies and sees a new transmodern civilization based on an absolute respect for life in general. This requires the reform of political institutions according to at least three postulates. First, considering economics, he refers to Marx's claim of a realm of freedom economic postulate. The objective of the, of the economy is human life, and this goal should be achieved with the least possible use of that life. Per Marx, we must operate in the economic field in such a manner as to always transform the productive processes toward the horizon of zero work. A perfect economy is one in which technology has replaced all human labor, which does not even seem that remote given the mass progression of automation. Second, a key postulate in the sphere of political legitimacy is perpetual peace and working towards this goal. Third, a key postulate regarding individuals is the idea of a new rights that takes into account the excluded, the exploited, the non-equals, typically citizens who are non-white, poor, post-colonial, or otherwise differentiated by culture, sex, age, or class. Dussel starts by suggesting that we should see the political as a totality. We should understand the political as a concept and politics as an activity. We need to analyze the essential moments of both the political and politics, since we have all, whether citizen or politician, failed to understand the meaning of our function and political responsibility. The political theses in part one discuss the prevailing political order, the diverse moments of the political, its levels and spheres, especially what Dussel articulates as this time of corruption. Part two then takes up the question of the possibility of having normative political pro principles, which he thinks is possible, and sets forth the minimal moments of politics on both an abstract level and at a more concrete level such that transformation towards a new political order could be realized. To Dussel, one problem with the pol prevailing political order is corruption, particularly the fetishism of power. This is a moment where the political actor, either citizen or representative, believes strongly in the power or sovereign sovereignty of the political institution and subjugates him or herself to that power. He explains what he means by fetishism. The etymology of fetishism is that it comes from the Portuguese word fetico, make or do, and means objects made by the hands of men that then become idols, worshipped as gods without necessarily having any grounds for this. Marx discussed fetishism in politics, citing it as having to do with the absolutization of the will of the representative. The representative ceases to respond to the will of the political community it represents and it instead responds to its own will. Will takes the place of reason. The justification becomes because I order it. The state is an example of fetishized power for the purpose of making citizens obedient. 
Habermas goes further and finds a lack of sufficient foundation for the legitimacy of the state. In the case, uh, the inversion that happens with capital is similar to that which happens with politics. In the case of capital, initially, individuals are the basis for value, and this living labor creates capital, but then a shift occurs as capital becomes the focus of value and the person or subject with the worker as its object. Politics, too, is initially created by individuals, but through the fetishism of power, politics turns back on itself to become the subject with individuals as its objects. To discuss his ideas about political reform, Dussel takes the concepts from the French Revolution's proclamation, Equality, Fraternity, Liberty, and surpasses them with Alterity, Solidarity, Liberation, in the guise of a second emancipation. First, regarding the extension from equality to alterity, Dussel suggests that if we want to go beyond e the equality of the bourgeois revolution, we should find a responsibility towards alterity, towards the rights distinct to the other. That is why we need new rights that take the excluded into account. Some of these new rights are alterity and peace. In the political context, some of these new rights could be enough, but in my own opinion, what is fully needed to realize the absolute dignity of life in general is to acknowledge and create space for the being of the other. Second, regarding surpassing fraternity with solidarity, Dussel calls for a solidarity with the victims of the institutions that must be transformed. The current situation is as Levinas describes it in Totality and Infinity, an essay on exteriority, where there is the process of the totalitarian totalization of the totality as the exclusion of the other. The will to live of the excluded is negated by the will to power of the powerful. The political actor must assume as friends the excluded. The enemies of the system become friends, and former friends become the new enemies. Reminiscent of elements of the Marburg School, Foucault's Discipline and Punish, Deleuze and Guattari's Schizoanalysis, Fanon's Negritude, and Chamoiseau's Creolité, the method is to situate a viewpoint outside of the system in the point of view of the other, and from here carry out a diagnosis, in this case regarding the pathology of the state. Third, regarding liberty's extension to liberation, the idea is to see that the sphere of possible political transformations, including revolutions, is situated in the bigger space of liberation from an oppressive or exclusionary state of affairs. Therefore, the political transformations Dussel calls for are in accordance with a praxis of liberation. Prescriptively, alterity, solidarity, liberation is to be understood in service of the transformation of political institutions, where Dussel encourages a more broadly a positive understanding of political power. A positive understanding and a positive use of political power draws on the political power of the community as potential related to will to live versus defining power as dominant. We traditionally define power in the more negative sense of the dominant, as in Machiavelli, Hobbes, Bakunin, Trotsky, Lenin, Weber, and others. Instead, there could be a greater orientation towards consensus and community power, consensus as an agreement by all participants, and Arendt's communicative power, where the more individuals that participate, the more individual and community demands are satisfied, and this makes a protective wall, the power of the people. This is a formal moment of the autonomy and liberty of citizens, and this is liberal politics. Dussel thinks we can connect this liberal politics with conservative politics, which concerns itself more with the primacy of the will, as discussed in Carl Schmitt and Irrationalist Vitalism. One way to be mutually constitu constitutive would be drawing on Machiavelli's concept of political action, of the actuality of the political actor in the political field. 
By taking the action of putting his or herself in the political field, the citizen makes him or herself publicly present in the exercise of some moment of power, and this action represents the contingent and the uncertain, and possibly allows for elements of consensus and communicative or community power. In summary, this is a review of Enrique Dussel's 2006 book, 20 Political Theses, which is an endeavor to provide a liberation politics for including those who are currently excluded from political visibility and enfranchisement. The main device for this is extending equality, fraternity, liberty to alterity, solidarity, liberation. Embracing this shift could allow the transformation of political institutions away from their current corrupt state of a lack of legitimacy and false accordance of power fetishism and reinvent them instead as positive expressions of community distributed power for the building of a new transmodern civilization based on respect for the absolute dignity of life. Thank you and please join me next time for another episode of Technology Philosophy.